So Newton came up with this way to describe gravitation in terms of, say, the mass of the sun here and a planet out here. A way to describe that force, gmm over r squared, and how that force is the same as the force we feel on the surface, that was all wonderful. But what bothered Newton and other scientists at the time is how, how, how does that work? Right? The two things aren't touching each other. They're very far apart from each other. There's nothing in between. There's no strings pushing. How is it possible that these two things can, can pull on each other? So the concept of the field is sort of a way to explain action at a distance. That was the phrase we use. This mysterious action at a distance. Maybe it's angel wings and all these kinds of ideas came along. So really, the idea of a field explaining it isn't really from uh, Newton. So this came much later when we get into electric fields and magnetic fields and electromagnetic theory. And it was really, I would say, it was Faraday who sort of came up with the concept, and it was Maxwell who really wrote it in a formalism that was really perfect. Right? So Faraday and Maxwell, a few hundred years later, came up with a field concept. But now we go back and we use it to explain uh, how gravitational forces work as well. And here's kind of how it works. So like right now, you got the sun here and you got a planet here, and they're both feeling the same equal and opposite gravitational force. But what you have to realize is the sun, let's say the sun is sort of the, the primary object that's sitting here fixed, and let's say the planet's moving around and feeling this force. The sun isn't sentient, right? The sun doesn't know, okay, I got Jupiter here, I got Saturn here, I got the Earth here, okay, wait, now Venus is moving, right? The sun is just sitting there. It doesn't know the planet is here. It doesn't say, oh, let me pull on that planet. It's just sitting there. If the planet moves here, it feels a force like this, and it pulls on the sun like that. The sun doesn't care. So the sun isn't pulling specifically on planets. The sun is just creating a field, right? So mass um, uh, doesn't adjust the interaction. It creates a field in all space. That way it doesn't have to keep up with what's happening at every point and what every other object's doing. It just modifies space everywhere around it. That's the, object, the idea of a field. You know, a field, like a field of wheat. There's a little wheat everywhere. That's kind of, I think, um, where the word comes from. Okay. So uh, now let's look at how do we sort of mathematically uh, describe a field. Right? That's the idea. How do, we, how do we put that in mathematical terms? So let's see. What you would do is start with a force. So mathematically, start with force. Right? So the force then, I'm going to go with the uh, sun. Oh, no, actually a source to test. So the book we use, and I think this is a good way to, to break away from just thinking about the sun and planets. This is the source mass. This will be the big fixed mass that's creating the field. And this will be the test mass. This is the little mass that's experiencing the field. Now, it's true that this makes a field that this experiences as well. But to start, we just think of this one as the one. This is the main one, and this is the test one. So the force uh, that the source mass creates on the test mass Looks like this, minus big G, mass of the, the source mass, mass the test mass, the separation between them, uh, and then the unit vector from source to test. Right? That was the formula that uh, we used. It's uh, Newton's formula. So to turn this into a field, you can't really say the, f the, the field needs to be something independent of everything else, independent of what the mass is, where it is. It's just something in space. So to do that, um, so to make it independent, make the field independent of M test, what would we do? Well, there's an M test right there. Just divide by M test. So we say the field really is the force that the source creates on the source mass creates on the test mass divided by the magnitude of the test mass in, in kilograms. If we do that, it's the same thing. It's just missing that term. It's equal to minus big G, the 
magnitude of the source's mass will affect the field, right? The field will depend on how far away you are, r squared. The field will still point um, radially inward. And here I'm going to put just s. Okay, it's no longer a unit vector on the axis from between t and s. It's now just any direction. If we put this at the origin of a coordinate system, r hat can be wherever you are, r hat uh, points out. Right? And then the field points in because of that negative. So this is the field, and we actually give it its own letter. It's a little g. Right, so you create a gravitational field, a little g. You say, wait, we already used a little g. It was the acceleration. Yes, that is the gravitational field at the surface of the Earth. It's the acceleration pushing down. If you look at these numbers together, they give you an acceleration. So at the surface of the Earth, little g is 9.8 meters per second squared down. If you get further away from the Earth, you get a smaller value. If you get between two planets, it could be zero. You get all kinds of values. But little g isn't just the acceleration at the surface of the Earth. It's actually what we use when you see a vector on it. You know, they might mean if you're out off the surface of the Earth, it just means the general gravitational field created by an object.